Okay, so dear Dhamma practitioners, be comfortable yourself and relax your body. Keep your back straight, neck head straight in one line and your right palm on your left. So gently close your eyes and bring attention to this bell sound and while you're focusing to the sound, mentally relax your body, relax your mind and relax your breathing with your thoughts. So do nothing extra. Just follow the sound please. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhassa Homage to the Blessed one, the exalted one, the fully enlightened one. So dear Dhamma practitioners, before we start our practice session, as usual we'll take few minutes to understand how this practice will help for us to develop our conventional understanding and at the same time out of this conventional development, how we can gain our spiritual success. So, it is very important for yourself always to be very clear with your own practice. Because sometimes we have ideas and sometimes we we trying to, to become somebody or even we have kind of like intention regarding certain goals, achievements, but still we don't have much clear understanding about the very clear outcome or the, the final result. So by the time, maybe you get tired when you don't have that clarity. So then always remember when it comes to your spiritual practice and sometimes people look for happiness, satisfaction and sometimes, especially nowadays, out of meditation people try to gain this physical health. Most of the time as we know, all around the world people experience anxiety, depression, fear, unsatisfaction, and so most of the time people come to meditation to get out of that. But you have to remember when, you, when we go through a situation, there is a deeper reason sometimes we don't see. As example, anxiety or the depression or the fear, unsatisfaction or maybe loneliness. So, if you don't recognize that deeper, the very bottom reason, just having calm mind not going to help. And sometimes health-wise, when we have high blood pressure or the low blood pressure. And sometimes we, we, when we have dementia or kind of like any other mental situations, just calming down mind, not going to help, even health-wise. Because for a moment, even the mind settled down, the very root, the cause 
itself going to grow inside. So that's why it is nothing wrong that you practice meditation health-wise, but still you have to remember there is more deeper meaning behind this practice. That is not just maintaining this life with the with healthy way, not just maintaining our conventional life with more comfortable way. It's more deeply you understand the very nature of it. And when it comes to happiness, conventional level of happiness depends person to person. And what is the meaning of happiness? To you, maybe it is totally different for another person. So then how about you can gain that whatever the happiness that you look for. Even if it is based with just only surplus level of feel, feelings, by the time there is no end, then you have to keep Follow it, keep running behind that happiness. Because nowadays, people kind of like to have a wrong understanding about this happiness. And people mesmerize with this word, even without recognizing the meaning, sometimes people try to go behind it and try to get it. There is no happiness that you can gain until you that you 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 gain the right understanding so then always remember yourself when you look for something the very first thing you have to remember clarify yourself the very meaning of it don't follow somebody else don't just go behind someone even with the dharma or even with the teachings, it is useless without a meaning if you just keep following. You're not going to go nowhere. So then always remember, day by day always look into you. So Practicing meditation is kind of like a cultivation of your mind, development of your mind. And uh, in the Western world, in the, the, in the early Buddhism, there is no separation of the mind. But in the Western world nowadays, we are very familiar with the consciousness. And the, that consciousness has divisions. Conscious mind, unconscious mind and subconscious mind. So if we take that and try to understand what is the meditation means, so the conscious mind means it's kind of like a most of time averagely for a person, only 20% of the mind we use in day-to-day -day life. Other 98% mind, it's kind of like unconscious. When you see something, hear something, smell something, taste something, feel something, it is not your 100% conscious mind interfere with that. So the most of time, very shallow level of appearance going to be there with you. So why it happened like that way? Because when the experience come to us, when the experience happen most of time right away, rather than become conscious, we start to settle down with the memory and reasoning. And uh, it's, it's kind of like uh, your memory start to overlap with the moment of experience. And then it slowly neutralizes your conscious mind. But you experience something and your memory start to flow with the surface level. And then the most, of, most part of the mind or the awareness 
not active. So that is what calls unconscious mind. So it is there. So then meditation means how, that uh, how you active this unactivated part of your mind. That means how you get access to your unconscious mind. Because in this very moment, it is there. And whole so far in your life that you just went through like a surface level, but the most of the, the awareness already gone. So most of the, the part of your mind you didn't use. So then meditation means you start to active that, activate that. How you can activate? So the very first thing you have to remember when you when you experience something slowly withdraw the mind from the, the withdraw the memory from the moment of experience. Don't allow your memory to overlap the moment of perception. So you can do that. So that that exercise, that practice itself called awareness in a certain way. And as you know, another method, another way that uh, the Western world talk about the brain, right and the left. So the meditation means, actually in the early Buddhism, there is no separation when it comes to brain. And the, when it comes to mind, this entire body is the process of mind. But in the Western world, we they, 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 they talk about it. So if you take it from them, the meditation is kind of like that you use the right and left brain both together at one time. And that is where you maximize critical, analytical, deeper observation and recognition. So if you can bring the left and the right brain together, let left hemisphere and the right hemisphere together, synchronize it. And at that very moment, the, the your awareness become powerful. So meditation is a method that's as example when it when it come to focus this this place what happens your your left and right start to get balance so that balance is very necessary there are many ways that you can balance it through many exercise as example the, your left and right brain balance when you go to the, the beach because the ocean sound, there are many experiment as done uh, with the, the this left side and the right side of the brain, how to synchronize together. There is a very famous research has done with the FBI and uh, using the sound waves. So it's kind of like, uh, as example, you focus to the left side of the your head and completely withdraw from the, the right side and just keep attention to only the left side. And then you drop that side and you keep focus only to the right side. There are different sound waves for that. And then by the time you start to access to both ears at one time. So it is an exercise. And then another thing is you close one eye and keep focus with something with one eye. And then 
you close the other eye and keep focus. And then you open the both eyes, keep focus to one thing. So that is another way. So hand methods also. So as you know, there are many the mudras, signs, the, the, the way that we keep the fingers. So in that way also, it affects for your brain to balance. So there are many ways. So somehow, this tranquility meditation means bring the whole energy together and synchronize and keep it as one. So this tranquility meditation, another word for that. So we explain through this uh, sessions in many ways. So I give different, different meanings and because we open different windows to understand this deeply. So tranquilizing meditation, the original it calls Samatha Bhavana. That is the Pali word. And another one called Chitta Bhavana. And another one called Concern, the one pointness and another called tranquility meditation. So this all the same meditation. And today I'm going to give you another the path to understand this tranquility meditation. It's called the stabilizing the mind. So the mind always moving. Going here and there, following your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, perception. Your eye faculty, ear faculty, nose faculty, tongue faculty, body faculty, mind faculty, always inviting for the perception. You are look for that. You waiting for that. And then the mind with your eye consciousness, ear consciousness, nose consciousness, tongue consciousness, body consciousness and mind consciousness always moving. It's like the waves. The stabilizing means you allow it to settle down. So it's not going to happen itself. You have to put the energy on it and you have to guide it and you have to have the awareness. You have to concentrate for that. And that way you can stabilize it. Just imagine anything when it comes to stabilizing means there is a way it can go unbalanced. But still you are capable to Keep it balanced. So that is tranquility meditation. Anytime your mind can go away, but you are capable to keep it balanced. So here the keep it balanced mean you are capable to bring your mind to any primary mental object. So if you can keep the mind focused towards your primary mental object, that is where it, it going to stabilize. So sometimes for that you have to calm down the thoughts, quiet the thoughts and little by little you have to bring the ability to focus towards the object. Because when whatever you try to stabilize, right away sometimes you can't do it. You have to keep keep doing, keep practice little by little, little by any even even these physical things. Sometimes just look when you want to stabilize anything. So that means you have to put the effort towards it. Tranquility meditation means. You have the ability to, to stabilize your mind. So then when you come to practice, what are the things that your mind that always this uh, 
make it unbalanced. Those are we call five hindrances. So one is desire, self-centered desire. This is me and always look for self-centered satisfaction. So then look, then look, when you try to close down your mind and settle down yourself, when you try to stabilize yourself, sometimes why the mind go unbalanced? Maybe whatever that you like start to pop up and try to bring thoughts. So rather than push away that thoughts, recognize is that your self-centered desire. Just recognize it. Let it be there. Recognize it. And sometimes envy, anger can unstabilize our mind. So you practice meditation, maybe there is a sound come or maybe somebody having a conversation, maybe they don't care that you practice meditation or maybe something whatever happened, it makes you disappointed. So then recognize to which category it belongs. If it is self-centered centered desire or maybe is it related to the anger or the hatred. And sometimes you feel sleepy, lethargic. And so recognize now three things. Sometimes thought arise and you feel more desire, lust, self-centered desire or maybe disappointment, unhappiness, anger or maybe sleepy, lethargic. It's kind of like you want to sleep or give up or get out of the posture. Kind of like there is no kind of like uh, energy to move forward. So that's also kind of like, it's a, it's a mental quality. So those are mental qualities. So, and sometimes restlessness. And there is no reason, maybe we sit for meditation and within one minute you want to change the posture. And then the mind say, oh, change, change, change the technique, change the technique, go for another technique. And then sometimes mind start to, to bring, oh, let's listen to music. So kind of like the mind always restless. And no reason, many, many, many thoughts keep coming. It's kind of like uh, you go for window shopping. You know, you look this, and then you look that. And then again, you there is nothing that you're going to gain anything, but still you have desire to keep watching, you know. It's like uh, women go to, you know, buy saris, <laughs> clothes. <laughs> you know, they want to they wanna see everything. <laughs> End of that, they don't buy anything, you know. So like that. So the mind... Always go here and there. Restlessness. And then another thought category is doubt. Even regarding the practice, maybe you observe the inhalation, exhalation. And then sometimes 
you don't have any idea about inhalation, exhalation, then the wonder mind arises. What is this? What is that? How this? And then maybe just uh, sometimes how about enlightenment and uh, how about if I attain to the the high mental powers or oh, what is this? What is that? So kind of like a shallow level of thoughts. There are more deeper way that the mind have the nature to bring this five hindrance. But still, just I give you simple example for you to understand only for practice point of view. So, so like that, all these five categories, thoughts, categories can arise. Somehow, that whatever the thought, if, if try to unbalance your mind, if you feel kind of like a unstable, so if you want to stabilize the mind, Remember, those are the five categories of thoughts that can happen. There is no any other way. Maybe desire, the last, you like something and pop up it and mind start to go away. It make you unbalanced. It will take you away from your primary mental object. Breathing or the sen so any sensation or the, the bodily posture or anything, whatever, even that whatever that you take as the primary mental object, your self-centered desire has ability to take it away. Or maybe unsatisfaction or the anger, hatred or disappointment. So another thing is maybe laziness, sleepy, lethargic mind. Or maybe wonder mind or the the restlessness, always jumping here and there, no reason. And uh, the fifth one, the doubt. So when the thought, if the thought arises, now you focus to inhalation, exhalation, that is our primary mental object. That is our basic uh, way to stabilize the mind. So once you focus your mind, if the mind start to go away, don't try to struggle with the thoughts. Now what you need to do, recognize it belongs to which category out of that five. That is what you need to do. And once you recognize, you bring it back without having any comments without having any kind of mental chattering without thinking about it just let it be there bring your mind to in front of your nose and upper lip area settle down and maybe within another few moments again the mind go unstable maybe another thought arise so look to which category it belongs. Don't try to react to that thoughts. You just recognize which category. Laziness? Or oh, that is it doubt? Or oh, is it restlessness? So then, once you recognize it, bring it back. And once you stable here, then again sometimes thought arise. So recognize out of that five which category it belongs. So in that way, by the time what happens, you are more capable right away when the thought arises, right away you are capable to recognize out of this five hindrance which hindrance it is. When that recognition happens, now you try to stabilize. By the time what happened, this hindrance start to settle down. And that is where your tranquility state going to arise. Once the mind tranquilizes, from that point, you are capable to more deeply 
analyze, reflect on the, the thoughts or the moment of experience, recognize and without hold it to that moment of experience, you can go deeper into it and see how this moment of experience happens. Because now mind more clear, you have the ability to, to have the direct perception, no memory interfere, no five hindrance there. So now you have the clear mind. So another way, having clear mind means, or another way that uh, cultivation of your mind means purify your mind from all these five hindrance. There are many other ways that you can get out of the hindrance. But one way is recognizing and stabilize and bring your mind or inviting your mind to the primary mental object and again and again, again and again, be with it. Always remember that there is no only one method to settle down or tranquilize the mind. Sometimes person to person, Sometimes according to your understanding, you can have many other methods. But still, one by one, one by one, you keep practice. And by the time you are capable to become more matured with the practice. That's why we bring in different, different way of teachings and give you a very clear background and build up a the platform for you to practice. So it is your responsibility to brush up with yourself and master somehow a very comfortable way for you, a profitable way for you to, to bring, bring, come to this tranquility state. So once you find your methods, then you can keep practice with it and then by the time very easily you can tranquilize the mind. So once you come to that tranquility state and then you have to slowly go into deeper vipassana level or deeply understand how things come to be as they are. So when it comes to that, the vipassana level of deeper understanding means form, feeling, perception, volition and recognition. That is our five aggregates. And other thing is we have six faculties. Eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and mind. So there is nothing else. Your life means, your world means, your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind. So whatever the perception you perceive through these faculties, build up form, feeling, perception, volition, recognition. There is nothing else. So then whatever you experience, it, it changes moment by moment, moment by moment. But still the thing is, when it comes to deeper vipassana level, you are capable to go into deeper and understand how this happens. Otherwise, we hold it as something, we hold it as memory. So once the memory becomes stronger, even that the per perception that whatever you perceive sometimes not important even, you can live with the memory. So that is the very nature of the samsara. So once you have the vipassana knowledge, once you have the clarity, you recognize this mechanism of the world or the life. So I'll give a simple example for this. As you know, that if you take two piece of wood and rub together, then there is a possibility you can make fire. Just imagine in the forest, there are two trees 
and two branches come like this. But still there is no fire. Nothing wrong with it. So two branches come together and they grow little by little, little by little. And by the time the wind arise, so the wind come. Not always, sometimes. So when the wind come, what happens? These two branches rub together. And then as a result of that, what happens? There is a possibility the fire can arise. So fire was not there and the wind was not there and the wind never brought the fire though these branches never brought the fire. So what happens? When the wind arise, the because of that, the, the two branches rub together need the necessary strength. It has to be strong both together because one if the one branch is not strong, that other branch is strong, that, that not going to happen. The, the, those are all the conditions. And when the fire arises, know what happens? This both branches burn and disappear. See, the, because of the branches, the fire arises. From that fire, it burns the branches. It's not going to be there anymore. So, it's a puzzle. And try to understand. This is the very nature of the world. So, your eye and you meet something, you see something, the contact happen, eye consciousness arise. And that eye consciousness Ignite that all the feelings. And then out of that, you hold it to like or dislike and then you hold it to the memory and then you hold as life. But if you look very carefully, the wind never brought the fire, the tree branch never had the fire, but because of these contacts, what happens? The fire arise and burn everything. So same like your eye, nothing wrong with your eye, so whatever the outside world, I perception, I, I object, nothing wrong with that. There is no suffering there. There is no suffering here. And the contact, even the contact, it's like the wind. The contact itself, no, no, it doesn't have any suffering. But the thing is, once you hold it as mine, it burn everything. So whatever you are, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, the experience, if you hold as mind, remember, it has power to burn you. It has power to burn that the people around you. It has power to burn your whole house. It has power to burn the country. It has power to burn the world. That is where this all the nuclear bombs, missiles, war, and uh, that everything happen and keep burning everywhere. Every day people burning and dying physically and every day everywhere we all are mentally burning and dying because this misunderstanding. But if you are capable, of course, it, it not everybody can understand that. 
But if you are capable, this the wind never bring the fire. The tree branches never had the fire. That all arise because of this contact and the necessary cause and conditions. When the day you understand anymore, there is no burn going to happen to you. That is the day you have the ability to have the ultimate peace in you. So you become kind of like a water for the fire. So then everyone around you, when they burn, you become like the firefighter can become solution for that fire and you can bring the water and you can keep that coolness in you and it will give the, the coolness to around you. Then everybody feel comfortable. So be like that. Practicing meditation means deeply. You practice this mental science inside you. And you experience it within yourself. When the burning process happens, you look into deeper into it and recognize that you are misunderstanding, misguiding. And it happens when the things go unbalanced. So once you recognize that, so you are capable to bring that peace, bring that coolness to inside you. So keep that coolness because it is very necessary and then you can share it with others. And naturally, this world going to become cool and anymore, it's not going to have the global warming. Why the global warming happens? It need because that just the nature. It because our heart already burned, our mind already burned, our our deeper inside, entire body always burning, 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 and that is where this the world itself is your body. So when you burn. It has ability to, to burn that everything. So then, so don't try to just uh, pick up, you know, the plastic and just uh, throw it to the trash can. It is okay if you have to do it. But don't think it's going to reduce the global warming. No. No. If you get out of the greed, hatred and the anger, unsatisfaction, and if you can keep the coolness in you, that will slowly bring the, the beauty to yourself and beauty around you. And it will have ability to transform yourself and at the same time, this entire universe around you. So with that, let's get into practice a little bit now. So your right palm on your left and neck get straight in one line and be comfortable with your posture. So bring your attention to your body and scan head to toes yourself and say Swapatveva or may I be well and happy three times. Take a moment and think. We gathered here in this moment to practice this ancient meditation technique. All the Buddhas, all the enlightened masters followed this path and achieved wisdom. So we also gathered here to accumulate that knowledge. In this moment with this sitting, may my body become more comfortable, may my breath be more smooth, may no difficulties come to me, may all the success come to me. Also think for a moment, this is the last moment we're spending in this very lifetime. And detach your mind from all your past memories and as well as any kind of future thoughts. Just try to remain in the present moment observing the sensation of your inhalation and exhalation. As I mentioned from the beginning, try to analyze your thoughts 
and see is it belong to any part of this five hindrance. So in the beginning, deeply and gently breathe in, breathe out three times and find the sensation, please. And settle down with your mind, do nothing extra. Bring attention to your body, please. Observe your posture. We cultivate loving kindness and compassion in our heart and radiate it as a light through entire your compound, village, city, state, country, world, around this universe, also as far as you can through galaxies, other planets, stars, reminding yourself like this, with clear intention, mentally repeat after me. May all living beings in this universe be well and happy. May everyone be happy and safe. And may their hearts be filled with joy May all living beings live in security and in peace. Beings who are pale or strong, tall or short, big or small, visible or not visible, near or far away. Already born or yet to be born. May all of them dwell in perfect tranquility. Let no one do harm to anyone. Let no one put the life of anyone in danger. Let no one out of anger or ill will wish anyone any harm. Expand the loving kindness and compassion beginning from your heart. Forward. Visualize yourself and send it as a light. your backside to your left side and to your right side Downward, and upward. To all six directions at once, like the moon, the sun, Spread the light, spread the energy without any condition, without any limitation, without any resistance or without any judgment. Let your heart to shine with the loving kindness and compassion from the bottom of it with the maximum effort to the highest 
wishing yourself may all living beings in this universe be well and happy. Say sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So first of all, we offer this practice to the great qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. Also by the power of this meritorious deed, may all of us attain to the supreme bliss of Nibbana. May all your guardian angels and deities will receive these merits and increase their longevity and protect all of you from any kind of planetary influences or any ill effects. Ittavata chame sampadam kunya sampadam sabbe deva numodantu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe bhuta numodantu sabba sampati siddhya sabbe satta anumodantu sabba sampati siddhya Imaya Dhamma Nu Dhamma Padipati A Buddham Puja Mi Dhamma Puja Mi Sangham Puja Mi Attaya Imaya Padipati A Jati Jarabya Dimaranam Ha Paribunjisami Idam me punya kamanga sevakaya vanho tu sabadukka pamunchatu. Bless you.